Good evening, everybody. This is Scarlet Coils, aka Dark Days. I'm about to do a recording of Mario Adventure 3 Mushroom Mayhem. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of all the various power ups I've coded into this game, and also going over uh, various other aspects and uh, game mechanics uh, sprinkled along the way. Um, First of all, I know a lot of people have noticed that I haven't recorded uh, any videos recently. I'm sorry about that. I have been very active on Facebook and the game is still in development. And um, I would like to also go ahead and talk about uh, the name change. Um, I've been going by Scarlet Coils in various other forums and communities for a while now. And um, I've really only held on to dark days in the ROM hacking community. So um, I figured that you know, I would just go ahead and just start using Scarlet Coils uh, pretty much everywhere just so that it was just kind of easier on me. Um, the name comes from the fact that I have red hair and it's curly, hence the coils and, well, the Scarlet part. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this video. So this is just a task map. Alright, so uh, I'm going to go over the status bar. Uh, starting from the top, going left to right, we have our P meter, which is used for more than just the flying time. We have a uh, air meter. We have our total magic stars collected, which are used to unlock boss levels. Our cherry count, which is used to uh, equip badges. And then we have our experience points, which are used to earn new abilities. Then we have our coins, which are used to buy items that are equipped. Then we have the current stars collected in this uh, specific level. And then we have our day night slider. And then um, the blank tiles, the one on the left indicates the currently equipped badge, and the one on the right indicates the currently equipped item. Pressing select will actually change the status bar to a secondary version. So we, here we have our total number of points collected in the game. Then we have our total in-level game timer. And then we have an odometer, and at the bottom we have the, uh, the current level's name. So, uh, you earn experience by defeating enemies, so like when I bought this Koopa, I'll get one experience points. Whenever you defeat multiple enemies in rapid succession, you'll actually get a summation of all the uh, enemies that you destroyed. So here we got a total of three points, because we defeated one Goomba, and then the next Goomba get one experience points, plus the one experience points we got from the previous Goomba. So one plus one plus one equals three. Um, if you're small Maria, you'll actually get double the amount of experience points. So here we saw we got a total of two, and then we added another four for a total of six. Now you'll notice that as I'm moving back and forth, the clouds are actually moving in a parallax scroll. Um, this is another feature that I've added. Um, and the clouds actually turn into stars at night. So uh, whenever you have multiple uh, power-ups on the screen, the previous one will actually poof away to let you know that the other one did just disappear into the ether. Um, the game has a limitation on the number of uh, power-ups it can actually display, and I just figured this indicator would be really nice. So, Raccoon Mario doesn't have a whole lot of changes, but I have added one important change. Raccoon Mario, when he whacks his tail, can actually deflect projectiles back at an enemy. So, I'm going to deflect this next fireball here, and um, I'm going to show you that whenever I run into it, it doesn't hurt me, but it hurts the enemy. Um, so next I'm going to show you that whenever I start running, it charges up my P-meter as before. And um, whenever I jump up, obviously I'm going to start flying. That's not changed from Super Mario Bros. 3. And of course it depletes, and you can't fly anymore. Um, I'm going to break open this, uh, show this fine out here, and let me just talk about climbing in the game. Um, I changed climbing a little bit so that whenever you press A while you're on the vine, you'll actually jump off of it. This is something that was introduced in Super Mario World, and it's something I really had to add to my game. <coughs> so next I have the, uh, Fire Flower. The, uh, flower, Fire Flower, um, the fireballs can interact with, uh, different in-game environments, namely, uh, things that look like ice. So you see that I am, uh, melting the ice around these coins, activating them. And then I can collect these coins here. Um, I also had in the mechanic that if you hold up and press the B button, you'll actually throw a fireball up in the air. You lob it up in the air. So you notice that I'm throwing it in two different directions, based off if I'm holding the up button or not. And you can see here I can reach things that I normally couldn't uh, by just pressing B on the ground. Um, I've gotten used to this so much that when I play other 2D Mario games that I'm holding up the press B and I miss it, like, dearly. So here's another uh, in-level interaction, environment interaction. Um, you notice that the top of this water was frozen and now it's not because the fireballs melted at the top of it. And now that I'm in the water, you notice that the air meter is slowly depleting. 
and whenever I jump out of it, it fills back up. If the air meter gets completely depleted, Mario will die instantly. However, if I just swim to the top of the water, you notice that I will get gulps of air. So, I will go ahead and uh, show you guys the ice flower. The ice flower is the opposite of the fire flower. Uh, it can interact with um, <coughs> in-game um, objects, like these munchers here. The ice balls will actually uh, freeze the munchers and make them harmless to Mario. Um, however, fireballs will melt the munchers and reactivate them. And one thing to note is that the enemy's ice balls and enemy fireballs will interact with objects just like Mario does. So, um, just like I've uh, melted the ice that was on top of the water before, I can actually use these ice balls to freeze the top of the water and create a bridge over it. However, um, one of the things I added is that if you're under the water and you hit your head on this ice right here, you actually break it. This is happens even if you're a small Mario, and this is to prevent yourself from trapping yourself underwater and dying um, due to air loss. Um, one thing about this ice, though, is to prevent yourself from uh, being stuck in case you have to go underneath the water to progress to the level. Um, the ice will actually break if Mario is on an ice block with while carrying um, a Koopa shell, as you can see here. And once again, this is the uh, just to make, so, make it so that um, Ice Mario doesn't uh, soft lock himself out of uh, a level. Especially since there's no timer and you won't die. Um, there's some brand new kicking mechanics that I'm going to show off here. So if you're standing still and you hold up and you let go of the B button, you actually kick shell up. Um, sorry about this lag, there's some enemies off screen that have spawned. Um, if you hold down whenever you let go of the button, you'll uh, kick the shell downward and it'll skid across and it will not go into a spin. Um, if you are moving whenever you hold up, um, you'll actually kick the shell into a spin and you'll kick it upward. The speed at which the shell will actually move is dependent on the state that Mario is moving. So as you can see, that's a pretty uh, slow spin and that was a pretty quick spin. Um, and it's based off Mario's velocity, and it's just a little bit uh, quicker than he is. So you notice I uh, froze that uh, Koopa, so the ice balls can actually freeze some enemies, and they turn into blocks of ice. And their hit detection actually remains. So if you notice that I'm standing on top of this um, tall piranha plant. <coughs> and um, I got all the same kicking mechanics with a frozen uh, enemy as I do with like uh, shells and Koopa shells. Um, so, I'm going to show you that I can't jump over this wall as regular Mario. Uh, well, as Ice Mario. But, um, Frog Mario actually gives me the ability to jump higher so I can actually scale over that wall with ease. Um, Frog Mario actually has the ability to go invincible by holding the down button and hitting B, and then holding the B button. Uh, he will be invincible as long as he's got P meter, and then he can't use it again until his P meter refills. Um, this is to prevent abusing the invincibility power up since uh, your P meter inc uh, increases pretty quickly. And you notice that, you know, it looks like Mario is constantly invincible, but I guarantee you that there's a couple of frames which he's going to get hurt. If, so you can't really spam it out and abuse it in the game. And you also notice that, that Mario, the frog Mario is inside the water. Um, his air meter is actually not going down. I know frogs can't breathe underwater, but, you know, it was an extra mechanic that made sense. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and produce the Koopa suit now. So, the Koopa suit uh, gives me the ability to go into a shell, like that, and um, if I am running fast enough and I press down, I will go into a spinning shell. The spinning shell will bounce off the walls and activate question blocks and break open bricks. However, with bricks, instead of ricocheting off of them, I'll actually go straight through them. So, like this here. You notice that? And you notice that my P-meter started to go down right there. If the P-meter goes all the way down while you're inside of a shell, you'll stop spinning and then you'll become vulnerable again. And the shell can actually hurt enemies. One other thing is that spinning in a shell and landing on top of spikes or munchers will allow you to ricochet right off of them. However, if you hit the side of a muncher or a spike, you'll actually get hurt. So remember, you have to land squarely on top of the uh, stage hatcher to ricochet off of it, and you have to be in a spin. So um, next, we're going to talk about the Hammer Brothers suit. Or, I'm sorry, the Sledge Brothers suit. You notice that the hammers that I throw are a little bit heftier than the hammers that were in Super Mario Bros. 3. Um, these hammers can actually inter interact with um, the stage as well and break open stone blocks. 
and only Mario's hammers can break open these stone blocks here. Mario's hammers can actually activate different blocks in the level, like question blocks, bricks, and the Super Mario World style uh, turn blocks. Um, and of course, we have this spring here that Mario can actually carry, and uh, anything that Mario can carry and kick, he has the exact same kick, uh, kicking mechanics, so he can kick up, he can kick down. Um, obviously, this isn't a shell, so kicking it forward won't cause it to spin and hurt enemies, and this won't actually uh, activate any of the blocks. Um, but I did code it so that if you could get into a wall, it doesn't die, it doesn't go inside the wall, it always uh, ricochets off so that way if you need the spring for whatever reason, you're not, you know, make yourself stuck in the level. So going up this pipe, I'm going to activate these Super Mario World style blocks here. And I'm going to grab the Fox Leaf, and I am now Firefox Mario. Firefox Mario uh, has a tail, but he can't float in the sky like uh, Raccoon Mario can. But he can whack his tail and use it as an attack and to activate blocks. However, uh, Firefox Mario, when he double ta taps B, he can actually do a fire dash. Now, I don't have to be in the air to do this, but I do this a lot anyways in the air because it uh, allows you to cover a lot of distance. Uh, and you notice that the, the P meter depletes pretty quickly uh, while you're in the fire dash. And of course, if you hit a wall, you'll actually come out of it and you'll uh, cause the ground to shake, or the ground is going to shake. Um, another thing is, like, these uh, turn blocks can actually be broken with just uh, Firefox Mario's Fire Dash only. And I'll use the Fire Dash here to show that I can actually activate this brick block and uh, get the mushroom with the side. So this is the Ninja Mushroom. Uh, Ninja Mushroom is pretty OP. Uh, he has the ability to throw shurikens in seven different directions, and people may ask, uh, why is he all black? Why not add an outline to him? Well, ninjas are all black, and they're hard to see at night as it is. So I figured, you know, to add a little bit of a disadvantage to him, I would leave him all black to make him a little harder to see at night. Um, otherwise, I feel like he would just be too OP for his own good. Uh, and you know that the shurikens will, like, go through walls, and, and they're pretty versatile, and they're stronger than uh, fire, fireballs and ice balls. Um, another thing that Ninja Mario can do is that he can slide up against walls, which will slow his descent like this. And um, if, if you... To do this, you have to press into the wall that you're moving into, and if you jump while you're skidding off of it, you'll do a wall jump like this. However, one of the downsides is that it, you can skid uh, against walls that have ice on them like this, but you skid down them much faster because Ninja Mario just doesn't have any grip. You can still wall jump of it, off of it, it's just going to be a little bit harder to do. Let me do this here while I'm trying to... Okay. Ah, got it. Alright, so that was a really quick um, walkthrough through all the power-ups, so I'm going to go a few, go through over a few game mechanics real quick. So here we have a magic star that's inside of this question block. And you notice that was the first star of this level, so it filled in the first star indicator at the bottom. Um, you have three stars in every level. And when you collect one, it automatically saves. Um, I'm going to show off something real quick. So you notice these Goombas, whenever they're falling off the platforms, kept going in the direction that they were going once they hit the ground. Also notice that it is nighttime. A lot of enemies have certain uh, behaviors that change between day and night. So now that it's day, I want you to pay attention to these Goombas. When they hit the ground, they actually move in the direction of Mario, and they only do this during the daytime. A lot of enemies have minor uh, behavior changes, uh, depending on if it's day or night. Um, they're not huge changes, but they can alter the gameplay and throw you off a little bit. So you kind of have to figure out what do they do different between uh, day and night. Um, Let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go ahead and show the key mechanics in this game. Um, as you see, we have this locked door over here that you can't go in. Let me get rid of this Goomba. They just keep coming. Um, and then, of course, we have a key that's inside there. And as you can probably guess, you could pick up that key like you can other objects and move it into the door and it'll unlock it. Just like Super Mario Bros. 2. And now I'm on the other side. Um, and you see here that we have another keyhole that's inside of a block. A keyhole inside of a block, when you move a key into it, will actually unlock a series of blocks, as you saw right there. Um, and then finally, inside of this block, we have our Poison Mushroom, which is where the Mushroom Mayhem subtitle comes from. The goal of every level, besides collecting magic stars, is to find these poisonous mushrooms and destroy them. 
And of course, you get your fanfare, and that ends a level.